The 23-24 season did not go as planned for the German giants Bayern Munich. At the end of the season, for the first time in 11 years, Bayern failed to win the Bundesliga with the sheer excellence of Xabi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen destroying their hopes. Their misery didn't stop there. They also failed to win both the Champions League and the German Cup. Bayern Munich went trophyless in the 23-24 season. This is the first trophyless time in over a decade. The last time they finished a season without a trophy was the 2011-12 season 12 years ago. In the words of Thomas Tuchel, everything that could go wrong did go wrong for Bayern Munich last season. So it was a very disappointing season for the German giants. They didn't just lose the league, they lost it in grand style. Bayer Leverkusen won the league unbeaten, getting four points out of their two encounters with Bayern Munich, including a 3-0 humiliation of the German giants in February 2024. Bayern Munich ended the 23-24 season as third on the league table. They also narrowly missed out on the Champions League thanks to a loss against Real Madrid in the semi-final. Third on the league table and semi-final of the Champions League. Did Bayern Munich really have a bad season? Or are they just greedy? Must they always win the league? Bayern's 23-24 season is definitely not a bad season by the standard of a lot of teams. For instance, Arsenal finished second on the Premier League table, missed out on the FA Cup and the Champions League, they didn't even make it up to the semi-final, and their season was said to be one of their best in recent years. But for Bayern Munich, the giants of Germany, one of the biggest and most decorated clubs in Europe, their 23-24 was beyond humiliating. In total, Bayern Munich have won 33 league titles, 20 DFB German Cups, 11 DFB Super Cups, 6 Champions Leagues, 2 FIFA Club World Cups, 2 UEFA Super Cups, 2 Intercontinental Cups and many more Cups. The history of Bayern Munich is one of grass to grace. Although Bayern Munich were founded in 1900 by 11 players led by Franz John, Bayern did not set the world alight right away. The club had to wait for 32 years for its first national championship in 1932. The golden era for Bayern actually started in the 1960s, and since then, they've been writing their name into the history books. More trophies have rolled in since that first in 1932. Bayern Munich are so good that it's actually their fault that the Bundesliga has been given the title of the Farmers League by some, owing to their domestic dominance. The Bundesliga was founded in 1963. 61 full seasons in the Bundesliga have given fans at home and abroad some of the best football they've seen and some incredible teams over the years. And without a doubt, the best club in the Bundesliga has been Bayern Munich. The Farmers League title has come about as the club has won an astonishing 33 of the last 61 league titles. To add to this, Thomas Muller, Bayern Munich legend, has won more Bundesliga titles than any other club in the league. Bayern became the first team in Europe to win 10 and then 11 consecutive league titles. This is no easy feat. The fact that no other Bundesliga team in history has ever won a double-digit number of league titles makes this even more impressive. Now, we all know Bayer Leverkusen won the 23-24 league title and went invincible and interrupted Bayern's league-winning streak that had appeared to last forever. Some people attribute the success to Xabi Alonso's team's outstanding play, but many are of the view that Bayern Munich lost the title because they got complacent and didn't put in enough effort. Anyway, one thing is clear. After an abysmal 23-24 season, Bayern Munich needed to restructure their team. It was a very difficult season for all of us. I believe that there has to be a fresh start now for us, for the club, and also from us as a team. It's clear that things cannot continue like this. We have to show a completely different face as a team next season in order to be able to compete again, club legend Manuel Neuer stated. As expected, this restructuring started with the sacking of Thomas Tuchel, the team's manager. 
In February 24, after the 3-0 loss to Leverkusen, 1-0 loss to Lazio in the Champions League, and 3-2 loss to VfL Bochum, Bayern Munich announced that Tuchel would not be in charge after the end of the season. Bayern CEO Jan Christian Driessen said, In an open, good conversation, we came to the decision to mutually end our collaboration with Tuchel in the summer. Our goal is to carry out a sporting realignment with a new coach for the 24-25 season. Until then, every individual in the club is expressly challenged to achieve the maximum possible in the Champions League and the Bundesliga, the Bayern CEO stated on the club's website. At the end of the season, the hunt for a new manager started. We have to find the right coach for Bayern and the players who will fit in with that, Bayern's board member for sport, Max Eberl, said. In their pursuits to find a new manager, Bayern first toyed with the idea of bringing Julian Nagelsmann back, especially since the board members who had problems with him while he was at Bayern had been sacked. But Nagelsmann decided to renew with Germany, and so Bayern's excursion began. Next, they considered Roberto De Zerbi after his impressive couple of years in charge of Brighton. However, a move didn't materialise. Then Bayern's board flirted with the idea of Unai Emery and wanted to begin conversations with him, but the Spaniard received a new contract from Aston Villa as he neared a Champions League spot. Then came a familiar figure who Bayern felt would be tempted, the high-flying Stuttgart coach Sebastian Hoeneß. Unfortunately, Taking Stuttgart to the Champions League earned him a fresh deal as well, just as Bayern glanced in his direction. So they had to look away, and they zeroed in on former Manchester United flop, Ralph Rangnick. Rangnick was tempted, but ultimately decided to further commit himself to the Austrian national team. Speaking of Austria, Bayern then turned to Austrian tactician Oliver Glasner, but Crystal Palace told them, that they would have to pay 100 million euros to get him from Selhurst Park. Glasner had an electric start to being Palace's manager, and Palace would prefer to keep it that way. After the Glasner pursuit ended in an epic fail, Bayern then went back to discuss with Tuchel. The team was in high spirits, but unfortunately, despite coming close to agreeing with Tuchel, Tuchel himself decided to leave. And that's when Bayern did a move that surprised the footballing world. They turned their sights to an unlikely man, Vincent Kompany. After many months of deliberations, Bayern Munich decided to appoint Vincent Kompany as manager. This decision shocked many because Kompany had in the previous season led Burnley, a Premier League club, to relegation. So the big question still is, why? The former Man City captain, Vincent Kompany, began his managerial career at his boyhood club Anderlecht in 2020 as a player manager. He became a full manager in the second season and led the team to third position in the league and to the Belgian Cup final. In 2022, he was approached by Burnley in the Championship of English Football and he took the job, later leading Burnley back to the Premier League in style in his first season. Now, not many people were fans of Company when he was at Anderlecht. Company faced criticisms for how he played. He favoured an attacking style of play which some felt wasn't practical. He was seen as a Guardiola wannabe. Former Ajax coach Ad de Moss criticising Company said, Company wants to do the same thing as Guardiola in City and that makes me sick. Now, even though he was criticised for the way he played, the Belgian tactician didn't change his playing style when he got to Burnley. In fact, he transformed Burnley, a team notorious for defending and counter-attacking. Company changed Burnley in many ways. At the end of the season, he led Burnley to finish top of the championship with 101 points, becoming the first team to achieve over 100 points in nine years. Burnley were promoted to the Prem because Company chose to be rigid with his ideals. For company, it was attacking style or nothing. And as he would find out, this would be a different story in the Prem. Still, did he change his philosophy? No. Now, this rigidity cost Burnley their promotion. At the end of the season, Burnley were unfortunately relegated back to the Championship. Although many will say 
Burnley were one of the best teams to watch in the Premier League in the 23-24 season, beautiful football was not enough to keep them in the league. But it was enough to get their coach appointed by the German giants. Company just couldn't get it right with Burnley in the Premier League. The team was poor both in attacking and defending. Attack wins you games, defence wins you titles, Sir Alex Ferguson famously said, and he couldn't be more right. Burnley were effective at both ends of the pitch during their promotion campaign in the Championship, but as soon as they were promoted to the Premier League, their attack began to falter and their defence collapsed. They just couldn't score. Against Crystal Palace in the 23-24 season, Burnley created more than enough chances to win the game. They had 17 shots to Palace's four and somehow still ended up on the wrong side of a 2-0 scoreline. So after the 23-24 season that Company and Burnley had, how come the German giants Bayern Munich still decided to trust him with such a big task? Company is notorious for being a teacher. He doesn't just achieve with a team, he builds the team. And this is the major reason that Bayern Munich went for him. Bayern saw Company as a gamble worth taking. The Belgian manages well, plays beautiful football, which Munich have missed since Guardiola left in 2016, and also proved in his first year at Burnley that he can win trophies. The logic behind Bayern's appointment of Company is simple. With one of the weakest squads in the Premier League, Company fumbled. But with one of the best squads in the Championship, he flourished. Company proved in his first season with Burnley in the Championship that if he has the tools, he can get it all. Choosing company also highlights the changing view of what makes an elite coach, a growing willingness to look beyond results and towards a style that can be transferred, Adam Bates of Sky Sports stated. And so far in the 24-25 season, company has proven to be equal to the task at Bayern. After the first few matches, Bayern are undefeated. The Belgian defeated Wolfsburg in his first official match as manager of Bayern Munich, 3-2. In the second match of the season, he defeated Freiburg 2-0 and humiliated Kiel 6-1 on match day three. He also humiliated Bremen on match day four, scoring five goals against the German side. Most shocking of all was the record-breaking 9-2 win over Dynamo Zagreb in company's first Champions League match as manager, which broke the record for the most goals scored by a single team in a Champions League match. Recently, a one-all draw to Leverkusen was a decent result for Bayern as to keep their rivals at arm's length. So, in his first five games in charge, Company has led Bayern to win all five, scoring 25 goals with an average of five goals per match while conceding just five. Current results suggest that those who said Company was not fit for the Bayern task were wrong. And this has given Company the opportunity to hit back at his critics. Following a question asking for his take on the criticism of him, Company said after the 9-2 win, I was born in Brussels. My dad was a refugee who came from the Congo. What are my chances of even playing in the Premier League, winning something as a player and playing for the national team? The odds were 0. 0.0000 something. Now, now that I'm a coach, do you just stop believing in yourself and what you can achieve because of what other people say? The mentality is to keep going. And in the end, if you fail, you fail. And if you succeed, you succeed. But you can always become better. Company's philosophy is working particularly well with a great group of players. But who is especially benefiting from it? Well, Bayern currently have one of the best squads in Europe. A team of great players like Harry Kane, Jamal Musiala, Sane, Kimmich, Alfonso Davies, Gnabry, Upamecano, and the newly transferred Michael Olise can definitely conquer the world. Without a doubt, Harry Kane is one of the best strikers in the world. The Englishman has been in top form for Bayern Munich since he joined from Tottenham in 2023. Now, despite Bayern being below par in the 23-24 season, Harry Kane still scored a lot of goals. He was the highest goal scorer in the Bundesliga and also won the European Golden Boot. Kane was one of the few members of the Bayern squad who still had his dignity intact by the end of last season, scoring 44 goals in all competitions. 
Kane was not only ruthless in front of goal, he also formed an understanding with players like Sane and Musiala. Kane has started the 24-25 season from where he left off in the previous one. England fans, I bet you're wondering, where was he this summer then? So Kane is currently having an electrifying start to the season, despite concerns over his form after a subpar 2024 Euros. Although the Euros ended with Kane being one of the top scorers, scoring just three goals in the tournament is way below par for the Englishman. Also, throughout the tournament, his involvement in general play was almost non-existent and his first touch was surprisingly disappointing. However, company is beyond pleased with the way Kane is playing so far and will be hoping the Englishman continues to ship in the goals. Kane is also pleased with his new manager. I always say, as long as I get chances, then I'm happy because I believe I can put them away more often than not. As a team, the philosophy suits the personnel we have. Of course, time will tell, but so far, it's been good, Kane said. I'm really impressed with how much energy he brings. He's already managed to get all the players to respect him. The coach and we as a team are hungry to have a successful season, the Englishman added. Surely Kane can finally get rid of the curse this season, right? Jamal Musiala is another player who's been in brilliant form for Bayern. Without doubt, Musiala is one of the best young players in the world. He's Bayern's youngest player ever in the Bundesliga. He debuted at just 17 years and 115 days old and also is the Bavarian club's all-time youngest goalscorer, scoring at 17 years and 205 days old. As stated by Lothar Matthäus, he is the Messi of the future. So far this season for Bayern Munich, Musiala has picked up right where he left off last season. Company is a big fan of the young German. I've already experienced one or two players and Jamal should just carry on in the same way and not change anything. We're delighted to have him. He can become one of the three or four best players in the world, he said. The new signing, Michael Olise, has been in scintillating form for Bayern since joining from Crystal Palace for £50 million. His start at Bayern couldn't be much better. He has to keep going this way. I haven't got the feeling that he's a player who feels much pressure. He just enjoys football, company said of Olise after the win in Bremen. Michael Olise arrived from Crystal Palace in the summer and has taken to life in Munich like a duck to water. Jao Paulinha is another Bayern Munich signing that's been very promising. From the day his transfer was announced, much was expected of him and so far, he's been doing well. I can just name it easily because it's very obvious to see his biggest quality. It's defensively how he reads the game and the amount of balls he can recover. He's a player who has the qualities on the ball to be a Bayern Munich player, company said after Paulinho was signed. Bayern have also the best goalkeeper options in the league. Having one of the best goalkeepers in the history of football, Manuel Neuer, is a big flex. But a bigger flex is having Sven Ulreich, a top goalkeeper, as second option. Going into the season, Bayern's number one goalkeeper was in doubt. But so far it seems as if Neuer will retain his position as the first choice goalkeeper, even if he has had a little injury or two. I feel super comfortable at Bayern. I really appreciate what I have here. We're like a family. Sven Ulreich speaks about his role as number two behind Manuel Neuer. Bayern also have the likes of Upa Meccano, Alfonso Davies, Min Jae Kim, Rafael Guerrero, Sasha Bowie, and many other top defenders at their disposal. They're definitely one of the best squads in the world. As the saying goes, to whom much is given, much is expected. Company has one of the best squads in Europe. As a result, anything less than at least a trophy will be seen as a terrible season and might cost him his job. But he also needs to do more than just winning a title. Of what is expected of company, Lothar Matthäus said, we expect not only the titles, not only the first place, we expect entertainment. We want to see a good game. We want to have an attractive football style. This is the Bayern Munich that we have known over the last 40 to 50 years. So far, company's team is playing like they can win it all. Pizarro stated his admiration for what he sees from Bayern so far. Asked by Sky Sports about the new mood under Vincent Company, Bayern favourite Claudio Pizarro said, 
they have a new coach, and I think that's something interesting. What I've seen from the team until now is good. This change could help the team. A new coach, a new system, new things could happen. What I have seen, I like. I'm really excited by what they could do.